So in chapter three, lesson five, we're talking about absolute value. We said an absolute value is how many steps do I take forward or backward on a number line or up or down on a vertical number line. It doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative. I know I'm taking that many steps, so it's always going to be shown as a positive number. When we talk about today, chapter three, lesson six, we're now going to be comparing them. So I need to know that I'm going to be talking about greater than, less than, or could possibly be equal to. Remember, when we talk about greater than or less than, I know people teach it in different ways, and they talk about mouths and everything else, and people get confused. I, I truly believe that knowing that the arrow is always going to point to the smallest number. So the tip of the arrow at the smallest number is going to truly help you remember which way it should always go. If we can do that, then we'll be okay. Now. We're going to be taking notes, as always. Be sure to follow along in class. If I get a little bit too fast, then slow it down. Pause button. Stop, write it down, get caught up, or if you lose your focus, then go back, rewind, continue forward. It's gonna be important that we, when we read these that we think about what we're reading. I'll give you an example here on this person when we're talking about scuba diving. Now Cameron is taking a one-day scuba dive scuba diving class. Completion of the class will allow her to explore the ocean at elevations that are less than negative 25 feet. Use absolute value to describe the depths to which Cameron will be able to dive after taking the class. This is where focusing while we're reading is very important. I want you to understand math. And someone asked me last week, why do you constantly say that? I know how to do the steps. Doing the steps in math is not the same as being able to understand. Part of understanding is understanding the steps. Can I multiply fractions? Can I divide fractions? Can I add them? Can I subtract? Can I divide by decimals? There's yeses, there's noes, and understanding that is important. But when I get into these real life scenarios that they're setting me up with, I have to understand what is being said. This lesson, if I just let you go, many of you would get it wrong because it is kind of tricky with the wording that they use. So when we're focusing on what we're reading and I notice some key words like less than or greater than or more or less, then I got a clue in. When I get down here, if I comprehend what I'm reading and what we're talking about, that section's easy. If I don't, it gets really confusing. So I really want you to understand what we're doing with. So when I have this scenario, we're talking about scuba diving. Now scuba diving is a passion of mine. It's something that I enjoy doing. So I do understand that when I'm talking about scuba diving, that my zero is the top of my water. It's where I'm sitting with my mask off my face, making sure that my gear is working before I begin to dive down. So zero is what's representing here as the top of the water in this scenario. Then when I dive down, I'm moving away from zero. So what we're saying is that we're going to talk about an elevation, but we're also going to talk about a depth. The depth in this scenario is my absolute value of elevation because I'm moving away from zero. I'm going to be going down from zero. I'm going down from the top of the water. So it's a movement how many steps I'm taking. My elevation is my negative number. From zero, what depth do I go to? What, how deep do I go? What number am I reaching? So as we're going through this, just keep that in mind, and hopefully it'll be a little easier to understand. So it says to graph an elevation of negative 25 feet on the number line. So we're going to do that one with red. So this is how far she can go up to this point. But then we're going to look at what it's talking about when it says... I'm going to do less than, or values less than, or depths less than, negative 25 feet. Well, these elevations then are my focal point on my number line. I can go to elevations which are going to be my positive if I'm going up, or my negative when I'm going down. So I'm looking at numbers that are less than my negative 25 feet. Okay, so my next step tells me to list three of those. So I'm going to put those in green. So I can do any three numbers that I want as long as they are less than negative 25 on my number line. We talked about positive and negative numbers on number line. 
the math antics guy said, well, remember on a number line that when I have a zero, that my numbers to the left closer to zero in the positive realm are always less than in value. And that symbol still points to the left on my negative realm because the numbers closer to zero are going to be greater and the further away from zero I get, their value is less. So I know the values going down are my less numbers. So I'm going to click on the ones that we can see that are listed. So what I wrote or pointed to negative 30 feet, negative 40 feet, negative 50 feet. So I'm going to list those here on this line. If you don't like those, you want to put different numbers, that's fine, as long as they are truly less than the negative 25 as an elevation. So elevations less than negative 25 are found blank the negative 25 feet. Well, they are found below because I'm going deeper in the water. Because depth represents a distance below sea level, it is never listed as negative. This is where we get into the idea of absolute value. In this situation, the absolute value of a negative 25 feet represents a depth of key absolute value. So it is a depth of 25 feet. Well, if I'm at the top of the water, how far did I go down? I went down 25 feet. So when it says to write the elevations, that's the actual number on the number line. How far did I go? Then I'm going to translate that into a depth. How many feet away from zero or the top of the water did I go? So the absolute value of negative 30 is a positive 30 feet. An absolute value of negative 35 would be a positive 35 feet. And an absolute value of negative 40 is a positive 40 feet. So my elevation is at what distance did I get to, how far down below sea level did I go, and my depth is, well, how many feet did I dive? So understanding that, it seems a little tricky, but if I think about it, I can get it, I can understand it, and I can grasp what it is that they want me to know. That way, when they ask me a question about it, they won't trip me up. An elevation of less than negative 25 feet is a depth that is greater than 25 feet. So once again, my elevation is my number on my number line. It has a less value on my number line, but when I'm talking about the absolute value, the depth of it, the actual steps that I've taken, I've taken more steps than the 25. So Cameron will be able to dive in depths greater than 25 feet. Well, Mr. Barker, isn't that the same thing as going deeper? It is. We can put deeper there also. As long as we understand that we're talking about a deeper amount and also a greater amount in absolute value. The second scenario we have then, we're going to deal with money and bank accounts. So Cole has an online account for buying his video games. And it says that he always has greater than negative $16. Well, I don't know about you, but if I had a negative $16 in my bank account, that means I owe somebody money. That wouldn't make me very happy. But this is the case that Cole finds himself in. Use absolute value to describe Cole's account balance as a debt. So first, I have to look at what the word it uses. It uses words that it is greater than a negative 16. Greater than means that my arrow is going to point away from it. So on my number line, I know that if I have my negative 16 and the amount that he has is always greater than negative 16, then it's always going to be towards the zero. So when I pick three, I want to pick my 12, my negative eight, my negative four, because they're on the line. Now maybe some of you are stopping thinking, doesn't that mean that he owes less? 
Yes, because we're going to talk about debt versus the actual number on the line. So when we talk about these situations then, and I list those three up, negative 12, negative 8, and negative 4. We see that they are always found to the right of my negative 16. So if you thought, well, that means he owes less, you're absolutely correct. Because that's when we're talking about focusing on what we're reading and understanding what we're reading. Because we're talking about a debt versus a number line shown on my account. I could just see positive and negative numbers, and if I don't realize that I have a negative number, which is a debt, well, I may continue to spend money that I don't have, and then my debt becomes even more. So when we look at the it says express an account balance of a negative $16 as a debt, well in this situation the absolute value of negative $16 is indeed a debt of 16. So in the last one we talked about an elevation, which is an actual number on the number line, versus the uh, depth, which is a movement from zero. Debt works the same way. My balance is my number on my number line. My debt is, well, how much money do I owe? When I say debt, I know that I owe somebody. So I don't show it as a negative number. But when I list these out in this box, then if I have a balance of negative $16 on my number line, then that tells me my debt, my absolute value, how much I owe somebody is $15. If my balance on my number line shows a negative $14, then I know that I owe somebody my debt, my absolute value of my balance is $14. So I know if I go in reverse that if I owe somebody $13, then my bank account says, dude, you have a negative $13. We need to get that taken care of. Each debt in the table is blank, then $16. So my debt is actually less because I'm comparing absolute values. Cole's account balance is always greater than a negative $16, so his debt on the account is always less than $16. Not talking about the value of the numbers, talking about the debt. How much does he owe? He owes less than $16 at all times. Alright, so we're going to continue practicing forward. Make sure you're following along. And if I go too fast through these problems, please pause it so you can keep up taking your notes. This is what you'll look back at as you're doing your homework. On Monday, going back to a bank example. On Monday, Allie's bank account was negative $24. On Tuesday, her account balance was less than it was on Monday. Use absolute value to describe Allie's balance on, to, on Tuesday as a debt. So in this situation, the absolute value of a negative $24 represents a debt of, how much does she owe? She owes $24. On Tuesday, Allie had a debt of, well, let's go back, let's see what it said. On Allie's bank account balance was $24, negative $24 on Monday. Her account balance was less than it was on Monday. Hmm, if her account balance, we're talking about she had $24 on Monday, so on Tuesday, she had to have less money because that's what we're talking about, is the balance. The balance was less than it was on Monday. We have to be moving away from zero. So if that means that I moved away from zero even more, then her debt, the absolute value of it, is greater A debt of greater than or more than twenty-four dollars. 
Now Matthew scored negative 36 points in his turn at a video game. In Geneva's turn, she scored fewer points than Matthew. So we're talking about actual points. So we have negative 36 points for Matthew. And on that number line, she scored less than him. So on actual points, on a number line, we know that all the numbers that are less in value go to the left or are negative numbers. It says use an absolute value to describe Geneva's score as a loss. So Geneva lost how many points? So my loss is my absolute value. If I'm over here, and we'll just say negative 40. And these are points, then it is less than what Matthew lost or had. But when I talk about loss, it said to use my loss as my absolute value. So my absolute value loss is greater or more than what Matthew lost. Because she scored fewer points, well, she actually lost more than he did when it comes to my absolute value. On the catch shown in the table it is a tabby. The tabby had a decrease in weight of more than 3.3 ounces. So which cat is the tabby? So let's look at what it says. On one of the cats shown in this table, cat tables, Missy Angel Frankie Spot. The tabby had a decrease in weight of more than 3.3 ounces. So we're looking at a decrease, so we're looking at what type of number? A negative number. So it has to be a weight of more than 3.3 ounces. A decrease that is greater than that. So we're looking at a number that shows a greater distance than 3.4. So spot is going to be our tabby. On the next one, we're going to figure out what it is showing us. We'll show our work underneath each number so I can actually do my comparison. So negative 8, well, it gives me negative 8. And the absolute value of negative 8, once again, all absolute values, the shortcut, just becomes a positive number. It's pretty easy. The arrow will then always point to the smallest number, so I know it's going to point to negative 8. Well, if I have 13, and I compare the absolute value of negative 13, well, once again, absolute values are just positive numbers, I have an equal sign on that, because they're the same value. Negative 23 is just going to be 23, where the absolute value of negative 24 is just going to be 24. So then I have to know that my arrow points to the smallest number. Well, how about 15 and negative 14? Well, it's an absolute value, so four, negative 14 has to be written as a 14. 15 is just going to stay the same, so my arrow is going to point to the right. 34, it stays the same because it's a whole number. And my negative 36 would be an absolute value of negative 36. So I know it's going to be positive 36. So my arrow is going to point to the left. And then I have negative 5, which would just be kept as negative 5, versus an absolute value of negative 6, which is a positive 6. So my arrow points to the left, the smallest number. Now number 10 says to write the values in order from least to greatest, and each of these are absolute values. So the first thing I have to do is I have to show them as positive numbers. So I have a negative two, which would be the same as two, and I have an absolute value of three, which would be three. An absolute value of negative six would be six, and then an absolute value of 1 is just 1. Then I can put them in order from 
least to greatest. So I'd have one, two, three, six. But did I write them the way I was supposed to? No. So what I've said in, in your assignments is when I show you a specific way the number is shown, I show my work so I can put them in the right order, but I have to make sure that I list them the way it was originally. So this should be an absolute value of one. This should be an absolute value of negative two. Notice I left my space there. An absolute value of three and an absolute value of negative six. Then I've finished the, the problem. That's the end of the lesson. If there's any section that you were kind of confused by, go by it, back, review it, play it again. As you're doing your homework, which I'll have up on the board, ask questions, I'm there to help you.